to the NBA. A report from ESPN's Baxter Homes reveals that Phoenix Suns owner Robert Sarver is accused of overseeing an organization that many employees have described as toxic and sometimes hostile. According to the report, Sarver has used racially insensitive and lewd language repeatedly in the office and displayed conduct towards employees described as inappropriate. The league announced it will be launching their own investigation. Suns head coach Monty Williams spoke to the media on Thursday on this. As someone who's a caretaker of the program, um, I find all of these things that are being said serious um, in nature. And, you know, these allegations are, you know, sensitive is, is an understatement. At the same time, um, they're just not clear yet. You know, an article was written. Um, many opinions were shared. Uh, many feelings were shared. Um, but all of it happened before I was here. And based on what you all know about me, um, the little you know about me, um, if any of that stuff happened while I was here, I wouldn't be in this seat. We're not insensitive to everything that was said or whatnot, but, you know, we don't know all the details, right? So the NBA will do its investigation. And in that time, all of us on our team will continue to, to play and do what we do. And that's really what you expect to hear, Shay, from Coach Monty Williams, a couple of the players, Chris Paul sounding off there, is you got to let the, the, the review and the process uh, take place. You can't rush to judgment, although these are very serious allegations, mm -hmm. ones that should not be taken lightly. Let the investigation happen. Before I weigh in on that part, I will say it's serious. It's a bad look, clearly. But I look at Chris Paul, and it's interesting that he's the one speaking. He's the head of the players' union. He's going to play more of a role of just being a player in this situation, but also one that may have to be put in a compromising spot. Keep in mind, this guy is the boss. Sarver is the boss of this group. He's the owner. So Monty Williams in speaking, these players in speaking, are talking about their boss in a situation. So it's very complex. Chris Paul's been in this situation now twice. If you remember, no, he was with, involved in the Donald Sterling stuff yeah. with the Clippers. It can become a distraction for a group, no question, because all the focus goes into this, as it should. So I'm curious to see how it plays out, but also understanding this ain't going to be solved in a week. It may take months. It may take years. Yeah, I agree with you on all those fronts. And I'll, I'll just say this. I read the entire article. I've spoken with people about this article. I've listened to opinions about this article. When you interview, I don't care what the situation is, and I could, I could kind of look to the Deshaun Watson situation similar. When there's more than one person yeah. saying the same thing, I think we all know what that means. Even more than two people, fine. 70 people speaking on something. Now, I don't know what all 70 of those people said. They could have had the same sentiment as Monty Williams. Like, I haven't seen that or heard that. That's fine. But what I do know is when there's groups of people all saying the same thing, it normally leads to some sort of truth. The things I read in that article, I, I didn't like. I didn't like it all. But here's the world we live in. There's no video. There's no yeah. proof in emails. And unfortunately, until there are those two things, three things maybe, maybe there's phone conversations, I don't know, we're probably all going to have to have more information, right? Even though there were 70 individuals that were interviewed. And that's just the unfortunate world we live in. But, like, things like passing around pictures of his, you know, wife or something, like, that's just awkward. Why are you doing that? Like, that's well, just uh, there's something You're not that fit I'm, to lead. You're right, not fit you're not to lead. fit to lead. Like, there's just moments like that where I'm like, that's just awkward. What are you doing? And yep. why, I don't even want to know you're doing that, and actually, the, also. The, the other part that makes it dynamic, it's not unanimous. Like, you didn't hear... Um, people like Amani Williams or James Jones, who is the executive right. of the year, come out and say, yeah, this fits. They're saying they haven't seen anything like this. Steve Kerr as well. So they're going to have to do the proper digging and investigating, and we'll wait and see how and this so plays out. so you're right. Out. It'll take a while. But it'll it'll definitely be a while. But the Rockets and Suns did play basketball asleep and go. The Suns players try to keep their focus on the court while taking on Houston Thursday night. Devin Booker led Phoenix 27 points while Landry Shamit added 19 off the bench. But it was JaVale McGee who provided the big plays down the stretch in this one defensively. A couple back-to-back -back blocks as the Suns fight their way to 123-111 win. So thriving in the face of adversity. Yeah, thriving in the face of adversity. Thunder and Lakers also on the court last night. No LeBron James. He sat out. Lakers lost to the Thunder. Yep, again, 107-104. Shade Gildas Alexander, very good in this one, putting up 28 points and 9 of 17 shooting. And so that leads us to our first winner here, the Thunder. Hey, Lakers, they got your number. Why? Yeah, they do. The Lakers, yet again, blew a huge lead, a 19-point lead to be exact. And now the Thunder have two wins on the season, Jay.
You want to know who they're against? The Lakers. No, the Lakers have two. Oh, yeah, the Thunder have two wins on the season against the Lakers. Exactly. Unbelievable. The yeah. only team they can beat is the Lakers. They play the Lakers every day. The Thunder would be good. And Russell Westbrook down a stretch, taking a three-point shot. Historically, the number is not in his favor. They weren't in this one either. Winner, LeBron's dome and chill out. We ain't talking about his hairline. <laughs> Everybody wants to talk about here. It's after Melo banged down this three. LeBron in street clothes doing the Melo celebration. Three to the dome. <laughs> Melo needs a trademark that one. Give me an image with a picture. <laughs> He's also known to grab a rebound and let some expletives go, but we share that another time. All right, loser. What the hell even is that? Russell Westbrook <laughs> turned it over with 21 seconds to play and the Lakers down two. Okay, that was his league leading third turnover in a one possession game in the final 24 seconds of the fourth quarter OT this season. He now has 17 turnovers in one possession games in the final 24 seconds of the fourth quarter OT tied with only James Harden. I don't know that that's company you want to be in. I'll tell you right now, I'm not here for the hate of the Hall of Famer, but speaking of Hall of Famers and one of the greatest of all time, Father Time seems to be chasing LeBron. Check out his availability through the years, dropping dramatically since he joined the Lakers. But it's not like the productivity when he's on the floor is hurting at all. So maybe much ado about nothing, Shay? Perhaps. What about when on and the rest of the NBA last night. That brings us to around the association where we do indeed go around the association and we start with the 76ers and the Pistons. Kate Cunningham has been, well, bad. Let's just put it this way. So we had to feel good from 32 there. He sinks his first three in the NBA. And so, Jay? You got to start somewhere, Shay. And look, you got to be patient with the young man. It's a franchise in peril. They're in the midst of a rebuild. He'll gain his confidence. He's a capable shooter and he's a bright star. But you need to be talking about the Sixers. Nice little four-game win streak. <laughs> Sixers get the win, as Jordan just alluded to. 109-98 was the final. Jazz taking on the Hawks. Okay, Jock. Worlds, yep, there he is. Jock Peterson in the crowd. Trey Young, second in the league in assists with just over nine per game. So no surprise, he is. Smooth as glass. He had his own two points right here, but putting a little sauce on that thing off the glass. Double C, Clint Capella knows what to do, the two-hand jelly. Jazz win, 116-98. Celtics and Heat after the players only meeting and some words from Marcus Smart. The Celtics have held consecutive opponents to under 35% shooting. So, Jay? All respect to an intense defense. A mouthful right there, but it fits. Look, you want a group to rally in the face of adversity like this, come together and play for each other, and that's what we saw from the season. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.